So we can just set a high price and see what happens and then come down later, right? Hi, I'm Stuart Day. I'm a realtor with Keller Williams Pittsburgh North and today I'm going to explain why betting on a high list price for your home is not usually such a good idea. When we go to prepare a home to hit the market, one of the most important things we do as realtors is try to establish a fair market value for the home. We do this by looking at comparable homes in the area that have sold recently, land uh, value data, market activity, and we try to get an idea of what this home would most likely sell for. There is no magic number, but a good realtor is going to be able Able to aggregate the data into a meaningful price point, one that will earn the homeowner a great return on their investment while having a high probability that the home is going to sell at a reasonable amount of time. Getting the price wrong can either leave money on the table or mean that the house sits on the market with little interest and no sale. Many times homeowners feel their home is worth more than the price range we offer them. And one of the conversations that invariably comes up is, you know, why can't we just start with a really high price point, see what happens? Someone may buy it, you never know. And if not, we can just bring the price down. So let's run through one of the potential outcomes of this strategy. Instead of coming in at a price point that is supported by the current market, we come in well above that point. We get a few people looking at the house, maybe some even really like the house, but then they do their own research. They see that it's overpriced for the area. There's similar houses in the area selling for far less. And so they walk and this happens a few times. So then we take $10,000 off. But what if the market is cooling? What if sales are slowing, prices are leveling out? As you price correct your $10,000, so does the market. So now you're in a situation we call chasing the market where your price corrections are never catching up with the drop in the market. On the other hand, if we drop the price dramatically, like knock 50 grand off, then it can seem desperate and could be a red flag for people to start wondering, What's wrong with this house? So you made a bad bet in the beginning and now you're kind of stuck. You can't drop the price fast enough to catch up with the market without people wondering what's wrong and you can't catch up with the market by making smaller price corrections. Meanwhile, the market's cooling, you're losing potential value on your home, you lost potential buyers in the beginning and the end result is that you could actually make less money than you would have made if you just would have priced right the first time. Worst case scenario, you've lost your buyers and now your house is gonna sit on the market. It's also never good to have houses sit on the market for a long time because they start to feel stale to realtors and home buyers who are looking at the market every day and they see the same house week by week, month after month, multiple price corrections. It creates a stigma for that house and that stigma is gonna hang on that house for quite some time. Now this isn't always the case. Sometimes in a strong market that's having an upswing or in markets where we don't have a lot of comparables, we kind of got to do our best to go with a, with a gut price point. And that could sometimes be a higher price point. But for the most part, it's generally not a good idea to try to overprice your house. We want to try to come in uh, to the market at a price that is supported by your local market activity. And that's going to ensure that you get the most for your house and you sell it in a good amount of time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more, please subscribe, hit the like button and share. Don't forget to check out my small business series and head over to my website, yourpittsburghhome.com to catch up with articles and videos that I'm publishing on a regular basis and learn more about me as a realtor and how I can help you achieve your real estate goals. Till next time, enjoy where you live and take care. Hey, thanks for following along today. Part of my job as a realtor is to cultivate, educate, and grow the communities I live and work in. The other part of my job is to help people buy, sell, and invest in real estate. So please keep me in mind if you or anyone you know needs help in those areas. If you know of other locally owned businesses I should highlight in this series, please let me know. And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and don't forget the like button. That helps here on YouTube. Till next time, take care.